Man, welcome everybody. We got a nice group of us here today. And today we're talking about do you recognize your own demons? And demons come in a lot of different forms. And I'm just calling them demons today because that's what I refer to uh, those voices in my head, those feelings, those dark forces that come upon me. And so demons feels appropriate to me. You can call them whatever you want. Dark forces, bad influences, whatever. But uh, that's what we're going to go over today. And it's pretty fascinating. So there's a bunch of different demons I don't think that we really think about in our lives. Like our patterns, our habits, our fears. All these beliefs, you know, like especially believing in something without actually having knowledge of it. I think is a, is a demonic force. Wearing blinders. Of things that are in front of us. I think these are, there's some forces in our lives that don't want us to see things. Materialism, being self-centered, and a lack of emotional health and empathy. Like I think there are a lot of different ways that dark forces uh, fall upon us. And we're going to go over that today and I'm glad y'all are joining us. And if you're in the local area, we gather 115 every Sunday. That's 115. It's not 130. It's 115. Because I'm a stickler for that. So I think demons, your dark forces, like I have in my imagination, I think it's kind of funny because like, I'm your demon. You better listen to me. You know, especially if uh, like you're an alcoholic and you just got to take that next drink, you know, do it. You can do it. It's okay. You know, whatever your addiction is, whatever the bad thing in your life, like, uh, th those things happen. And I feel like there are these, these forces in the world that want us to live in stress, they, this, these mental constructs that make us want to live in the past. And I, I don't think we necessarily have to obey those. I think we can massage them and turn them into something else. And we're going to go into some of that, which I think is fascinating. I think they try to prevent us from doing positive things. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes when I feel like I'm, on the, I'm doing the right things, I'm on the right path, I'm helping myself, I'm helping other people. Like something's like kind of nudging me. It wants me to go do something stupid. It makes me want to be an asshole. Make, you know, like I, I feel that sometimes. I'm like, man, there's something out there that's wanting me not to be doing what I'm doing. And it's kind of weird. And... I hope y'all enjoy this. And we're going to talk about patterns and how patterns begin. Y'all, most of us had our parents tell us when we we're at dinner, eat everything on your plate. Eat everything. You better eat everything on your plate, boy, before you get up and get off that uh, table and go to, your, go to your room. You cannot leave until you eat it. Man, I, that is a bad, bad, bad habit to start forcing a kid to do. And I bet nobody's ever considered that a demon. But I have. Because it teaches you to treat your mind-body relationship in a very unhealthy way. What if that kid is not hungry? What if the kid ate until he was full? Do you just keep telling the kid, like what happened to me, it happened to most of my friends, most people I know, boy, I said, keep eating that. You ain't going outside and playing with your friends until you clean your plate. Then we got what we have in this country is everybody has to go get the supersized me and eat everything at every fast food place you go to. You know, we start creating these really strange habits and we don't even realize that they're habits. We don't even realize that we've been conditioned this way. And I think that's a really bad negative force that we need to be aware of. Because if we're not constantly striving to be self-aware, that means we're staying in ignorance. And ignorance is bad. What other patterns are there? You know, I mean, some things, even if you can't see it, they're causing you pain. Like, we all know people, and, and most of us have been this way at a, different times in our life, that we're so self-centered that I can't even ask somebody that I care about meaningfully, hey, how are you doing? Normally, it's very superficial relationships in this world. We see somebody, I'll see uh, Big D over here, Big Darnell, I'll walk in to Paul's feed. If y'all ever need some good feed and you want halfway decent service, he's the guy. But it's, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Andrew, who is not here today, he has one of the best examples I've ever seen of asking somebody how they are. I say, how you doing? Everybody says, oh, I'm good. And he stops and he looks at him and he goes, no, really, how are you doing? Man, that is one of the most beautiful things 
and one of the best examples to me personally, because I always think, I'll ask somebody, how are you doing? And you can tell they're not doing great, but they say great. And how do you say, well, tell me some more. You know, I'm here, I want, you know, I'm here to help. I want, you know, whatever, you want to go talk or you want to just go drive. You want to come over and hang out. Like you don't even know where to go because they're just like, yeah, I'm good. But you can see in their eyes, they're dying. And, and that, that was one of the best things uh, Andrew uh, showed me. It was just a great example. And this is really interesting to me. I love Benjamin Franklin. And if y'all or any of y'all are ever into any books, his biography is one of the best reads of all time. If I had to choose three books to just live with, it, his biography would be, his autobiography would be it. And he said that if we have one true friend in our entire life, that is extremely rare. If we have two or more true friends in our life, like Big D over there, it would be a, a miracle. A miracle. I don't think demons, these dark forces, want us to have true friends. I think it's really easy for us to say, oh, I like that guy. It's good to see you. Oh, here's some issues. And we just we keep on going about our life, even though they're, they're interacting. We see them. We, we, we're, we're selfish. We're self-centered. You know, we all have a lot of acquaintances, but how many true friends do we really have? Like, how many people can you call and say, dude, I'm in a bind? Some people are really lucky to have a considerable amount of friends. Most people have one, if they're lucky. And I think that is by a societal construct that we can change. I think we should change. You know, when we start thinking about new patterns, we start thinking about our old patterns and what we're doing. You say, this old way is just not working anymore. I need to start doing this new thing. I need to go down that road. I need to stop um, doing whatever I'm doing that's harming my life, my body, my relationships. But it, it's difficult. Like, it's really difficult. I've been so proud of Ricky for catching himself from uh, exploding, like he just, the world stacks on him. And I really bragged about it last, uh, I think it was last Sunday. And it is so easy for us to easily go right back down that one thing. Because Ricky was pissed the hell off in my office. He came to see me, and I mean, wow, it was, y'all remember that cartoon, The Tasmanian Devil? This is like, I mean, Ricky came in, it was, and I'm just sitting there watching him. I don't even know what to say. I'm just like, damn, I love you. Like, all I wanted to do was like unzip my chest and go, here, dude, I love you. I hope it helps. You know, like, I, I didn't know what else to say. Like, damn, dude. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you just got to get it out. And you got to be in a safe space that you can have a friend that you can just do that with. And you know where that friend's not going to go. You're crazy. I don't want to be your friend anymore. Screw off. See ya. I mean, we have to have safe places with our friends. And I feel honored that Ricky felt safe and considered me a big enough friend where he could just come out and know I wasn't going to stand up and tell him to shut up or do anything else. I'm just going to let him rant. Man, if you got to do it, get it out, brother. <laughs> I just don't know what else to do. I think that is the, the, the best thing to do. I know we have some journal writers in here. But if you have a new path that you want to change, patterns, habits that you want, you have to write them down. You have to go over them. You have to review them. You have to be aware of them. You have to think about them. And I don't think our demons like us doing that because there's always an excuse. Oh man, I can't. Oh, I'm busy. I don't feel like writing a couple of sentences down. I don't even want to look at what my goals are. I don't even want to do that because you know what? I'm Darnell, I'm Kevin, you know, I'm, I'm Dante. I don't have to do any of those things because, you know, I thought about it before. That's crazy. Those are very bad dark forces. And I think uh, assumptions make us uh, just assholes. They make an ass out of you and me. That's why it's called assuming something. You know, like, we, we don't know. I don't know if we got a new guy, Cooper, who's a new friend of mine. And Cooper's, uh, what if I just assume he's an ass? I've never even talked to him. He just walks in and maybe, you know, he has a big beard. He looks like a biker. And, and maybe he doesn't like me. Maybe he thinks I'm a uh, Banana Republic looking preppy douchebag. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. And he looks at me as a biker and I'm like, oh God. 
he's a dick. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, that, that happens. It happens to us all the time. We make all these weird assumptions of people and we don't know them. I don't know him. He may be the biggest teddy bear. He may have just looked at me and went, man, I love Banana Republic. Let me hug you, dude. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But we do make these assumptions all the time. And if we don't recognize our quick assumptions and our judgments and our negativity, we can't fix it. We have to be self-aware. As soon as we start doing that, we got to catch ourselves and just laugh. We have to laugh at ourselves. Just like uh, me laughing at myself the other day during road rage. I started, I felt it coming. And I was like, okay, Kev. Because I'll talk to myself like that. I'm like, okay, dude, that, that's funny. You're about to get really mad at this person that's going too slow. But why? You know, like, why let myself get upset? And if we, if we practice that art, it really makes a big difference. You know, it's really sad when your dog even knows you're miserable. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's pathetic, right? I mean, even your dog looks at you and like, dude, you need to get over it. <laughs> you know, there's like, this is bad. You know, a lot of people say, I heard somebody recently say this, and I just, like, wow. Like, happiness is just a stupid pipe dream. And I was like, happiness is a pipe dream. You know, we can't all live like Darnell. He's just in a perpetual state of happiness. I don't think it's a pipe dream. I think it's a state of mind. Happiness to me doesn't equate to, I'm always coming in here skipping and jumping and hey, I just love everybody. I don't think that's happiness. I think that's kind of BS. But we, we do tend to stay depressed. We stay in these patterns. We get isolated, self-centered, drunk, quick to anger. Ricky, it becomes a comfortable place. You know, like we get so used to that old behavior, like when we're pissed off, we're like, man, I love being mad. We see, you know, family or friends or and you always put some judgment on them like, man, those people are assholes. And then so you're like so happy to, to be in that mood. Like you're just, you, you feel comfortable because you've always been in that hateful, negative sort of place. That's like crazy. Like that's really strange behavior. And if we don't recognize it, we just stay in it. And our dogs even don't like us. Like, it's bad. It's bad. This is a big, big deal. I don't think demons really want us to ever stop and pause and take a breath. And, you know, me and Ricky see each other about every day. That's why I keep calling him out, because I love him. And he'll tell me, he'll know. He'll see me if I'm in a bad mood. And he'll tell me to stop. He goes, man, it's going to take a breath. It's going to be all right, Kev. You know, it's just like this. I'm just not doing anything different. I'm not yelling or screaming or, well, I might be cussing, but you know, I'm not doing anything crazy, but I have that serious, I'm all business sort of face on and I got stuff to do and don't bother me, anybody, I got stuff to do. And there's no attachment to anything or anybody because I'm just, I'm, I'm focused and I'm in that weird kind of almost joy, joyful pissed offness. You know, like I'm, I'm happy being aggressive and doing what I'm doing. And Ricky's like, stop, man. Take a breath. Just like we did, everybody helped me a minute ago take three deep breaths. It's like cigarette smokers. You know, why do cigarette smokers, outside of the, the chemicals and then the addictions of that, but what is smoking really? Like you're taking a deep breath to calm down. I mean, you're just going... I need to pause. I need to take a pause. It's unfortunate that they put all the crap in it that make you so addicted to it. But isn't that why, if you really think about it, most people really enjoy smoking outside of that little fix is I get a pause with my mind just for a few seconds. <sighs> That's really, really nice. And so if you just practice that without the cigarette, I mean, you, who knew that you could just put that cigarette down and just take deep breaths all the time and you'd probably be just the same. And it'd feel a lot better. We have to stop and pause. No matter what the situation, no matter where you are, whether you're in a, a war-torn country or you're, uh, you got one of those violent girlfriends that like to beat you up, then you got to take a deep breath. <sighs> I need to calm down. There are a lot of uh, patterns that are in gray areas, though. Like, I love to say the F word. Like, it is the best word for me. I love saying it. I love using it. But it offends some people. You know, some people just really get upset. Like, my mom gets really mad when I accidentally left the F word out. Son, you do not talk that way in front of your mother. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. You know? 
you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a word, it's, it's a lazy word. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you, people normally, depending on your tone and, and the context of it, they instantly know what you mean without you having to explain what it is you really mean. It's just lazy, man. Uh, but it's, it's weird. I should be a little bit more cognizant of how other people respond to language. And sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But at the same time, this is who I am. If you don't like it, well, you don't have to be around me. I'll try to do my best to not offend you, but I'm not living my life wondering if I'm offending you or not. If I happen to offend you, and is, I'm coming from a place of good intent, so, you know, sorry. But every now and then, I'm going to accidentally drop the F-bomb. So if you want to hang out for any particular, you know, length of time, it's going to come out. I've been doing it since I was 12. And when I discovered the word, I really liked it. <laughs> I was like, wow. So, you know, it's another one of those habits. You know, you, uh, that's 40 plus years of me saying the F word. And, 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 you know, should I work on that? Yes. And it's, it's like smoking for some people. It's really easy to be offended. And I don't know what offends most people. Like if, if all of a sudden this room was divided and half of them are Democrats and half of them are Republicans, all of a sudden they may never want to see each other again. This may not. If you have different religious beliefs, if you have different spiritual beliefs, different business practices, all of a sudden they are your physical enemy. I hate you. I despise you. You are my enemy. Man, what kind of demon is that? Like that is insanity. My grandpa, who was a very successful business guy, he was a die-hard Democrat. And I could not for the life of me figure that out. Like, I just did not understand. Because at the time, I was a die-hard Republican. I was like, Grandpa, what? I'm like, you're so smart. Like, what, what's wrong with you? He didn't pay attention to anything the Democrats did other than the philosophy that his parents told them they were. And he would tell this to me. The Democrats care about the underdog. They care about the little man. But he didn't pay attention to anything they did. Nothing. He just didn't care. He was going about his own life, building his own business, uh, figuring out how to get out of the way, like go around and circumvent government and everything else. But they took care of the little people. So that's all that mattered in his mind is what he, that's what he thought. And luckily for me, I don't believe in either party. I think they're both full of demons and don't want any part of them. We did this, I don't know, was this a month ago, Steve? I asked everybody to jump up and hug each other or hug ourselves. Man, hugging's a really big deal. Like, it's big. Like, big old darn, like, it's hard to hug Big D because he's so tall. So I feel like I got to get on a step stool. Same with Ricky. But, man, whenever you're in a bad mood and you hug somebody, it's powerful. And, you know, the demons want us to not do that. You can just think about this scamdemic that's happened over recently. You, you can't see smiles. You're forced to stay away from each other. You can't go see your dead grandma dying in the nursing home because you have the almost zero chance of giving her something that may kill her, even though she's already about to die. No, you can't see them. Stay apart. Don't talk about a boost in your immune system. Nope. Don't let all the thousands of other doctors that are given better advice. Don't. Nope. No, 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 no. No. We will not hear contradictory opinions. That, that's the dark force. That's bad. That's really bad. When we can't listen to each other. Especially people that know what the hell they're talking about. Man, do y'all ever feel this way? Like there's this little guy. Like I feel this way sometimes. Like somebody's screaming in my ear. Like, man. Go do it. Tell that guy to shut the F up. <laughs> Bitch slap him. I mean, there was a time in my life... Uh, uh, I, I've trained martial arts my whole life, uh, and sometimes whenever you, uh, whenever you're not not in the gym for a couple of days and you're feeling a little antsy, and somebody pops off to you or says something uh, smart, man, it's you just want to go, huh? Let's roll, baby, <laughs> without even telling them that. You just you know, have fun with them. Um, I don't like that guy because that guy's an asshole, and. I don't want to be around assholes. And I, I think of this with people that interrupt a lot. If you are talking to somebody and you're trying to talk and they interrupt you, they're telling you a couple of things. For one, what I'm saying is more important than what you're saying. I'm not listening to you. I really don't care what you're saying because 
whatever I'm saying is more important than you. So you just need to shut up and I am gonna shut you up because I'm gonna talk over you and tell you. That's kind of rude. And if you want to be listened to, if you want somebody to honestly and carefully listen to what you are saying, you gotta be also a good listener. If you want them to listen, you have to listen. That's just the way it works. Because if you don't listen to me, when I'm trying to have a conversation with you, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I've never had a conversation with Cooper. If he just started interrupting me and wouldn't let me finish my sentence, I'd be like, well, I was right. That guy's a dick. <laughs> you, know? you know, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. So we think about ourselves and get so self-centered, but we want the respect of somebody else listening to us. We, we want them. They better listen to us. But we have no problem letting those demons get a hold of us and saying, you know what? I don't want the same respect. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to give them what I deserve. So if you think you deserve respect, then give respect. If you think you deserve to be listened to, listen to somebody else. It's important. I don't want the demons to score again. I think it's kind of stupid. I think it's really stupid. I mean, how many of us have done this? Man, I am so responsible for this. I have sat around people so much in my life whenever I'm high flying, doing something, just made some big deal, something just great happened. And you're just calm. You look, you're feeling good. You got your shiny shoes on and smoking your stogie. And you're like, yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm better than you. <laughs> Whoever it is. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter if they're superior to me in every single way. Physically, intelligence, anything. This has been times, and I'm sure many of you have done this. You, you could be in a, a drive through window and the people handing you the bag, you're just, you subconsciously have this feeling that, man, I, I'm, I'm better than you. We've all been responsible for that, and that is some kind of BS. Yeah, how many times have we all done this? Somebody's in that drive through Somebody is in uh, wherever. Some waitress that just gave us halfway decent service. Halfway decent. Our first thought, a lot of people, is, well, I'm not giving her a tip. I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm better than you. I'm not going to, I'm just better than you. I think a lot of people have uh, are responsible for that feeling. Oh, that person's too fat. What a, what a fucking loser. I mean, it's true. It happens all the time. And who the hell are you? I mean, really, who the hell are you? I started laughing when I started catching myself do this I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago. I just thought it was hilarious. Because, you know, the more you think about it, the more you have to laugh at yourself. You know, these, these forces want us to put people down, want to call them names. We think it makes ourselves, you know, we feel better. For what reason? They're stupid. He's ridiculous. She's over dramatic. Well, maybe she's over dramatic because you're an ass. You know, I mean, you know maybe your girl's over dramatic because you're the rude one. Or maybe she's just over dramatic. But if you don't have an honest, open discussion with yourself and look at it objectively, even how are you going to know? You know, we just automatically go back to the assumptions. It's crazy. I think uh, these forces would like us to be stupid. I mean, just look at the public and private schools in this country. I mean, uh, who would have ever imagined 100 years ago to say, I need to ask permission to go pee? I got to ask permission to go pee. Who would have ever thought that we needed to put all those energetic kids full of energy to stifle their fundamental years to stick them in a chair and tell them to shut up and be quiet. You will get up and run to that next class when you hear that buzzer because we're teaching you how to be really good factory workers. We're teaching you how to obey. And you better obey. I think that's a bad, 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 bad thing. And if you disagree with me, leave a comment. And if you're rude, I'll never read it. Demons want us to waste our time. I mean, how many times? Like, it's okay, I think, every now and then to watch a, uh, just something totally stupid. It's probably okay to, you know, dick around on your phone some. But I mean, we really waste a lot of time. Like, I see it everywhere, everywhere you go. You can't even walk into a restaurant without seeing everybody. We don't even notice the people in front of us. They're just sitting there doing this. You're like, dude. I came here to have a conversation with you. 
But I, I got I'm, I'm not, like, all right. See, and then I just instantly had a judgment right then and called it because my first thought when I see somebody doing that is calling them a dick. I'm like, all right, dude, you're a dick. <laughs> and then you have to laugh at yourself. Like, all right, you know, they're just, they just don't even recognize what they're doing. If we took all the time that we wasted with that and said, okay, instead of just playing games on my phone or scrolling the old social medias, why don't I send a message out to Ryan? I hadn't talked to Ryan. Hey, Ryan, it was good seeing you the other day. Hey, let me call Dean. Dean, I've been missing you, man. I'm glad your knee's feeling better. You know, why don't I reach out and maintain and strengthen these relationships? Because in the end, it's really all we got, right? Is that video game going to come help me when I got a flat tire and my jack doesn't work on the side of the road? You know, if I'm feeling lonely, am I just going to go hide in a video game instead of calling Dante? Say, hey, Dante, man, I'm feeling like crap. You want to come down here and make me laugh? You want to watch some stand-up comedy with me or something? You know what I mean? Unless it's something. It, it, uh, these are a lot of demons that I don't think people think about. And I think demons like us to think that nothing or something came from nothing. I love talking about this with atheists because it really cracks me up. Is that what came before the Big Bang? And most scientists still don't even believe there's a Big Bang. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. And if there was, just say there was. What happened before that? What was before that? And then who put it there? Where did it come from? What is the cycle of time? Like these are questions that just are just, you can't just automatically dismiss it. Well, oh, well, there's just this rock and this little thing crew and all of a sudden there's people. Man, come on, come on. I don't think anybody knows what this universal force is, but I can tell you what is real. And whenever I ask for something and I ask for help, it shows up. It just shows up. I don't know how it works. I know that whenever I think about Ricky, and wish Ricky positive, good vibes. Doesn't work every time, but it works a lot. Just works. It's weird. I even think about that even more because we have so many people. I think it's so easy for these dark forces to go, man, that is crazy. You're crazy. Near-death experiences, people remembering their, uh, that's, that's too much. You're a wacko. But how do you explain all these documented cases, hundreds and hundreds of them, where... Not just they were near death, they were dead for a long time. Y'all remember a couple of weeks ago, we, or a month or two? That lady, she was in her 90s or late 80s. She had been dead for hours and hours. And they pull her out of the morgue because she woke up. She was like, oh God, I'm really craving a pizza. That's what she said. But it's so weird because so many doctors have made reports of people giving them great detailed descriptions of what they said to their family, what they were doing, what they wrote in the report, what they were wearing, how they felt, their demeanor. All of those things that are unexplainable. Just to say, nah, well, you know what happened from this big bang and there's nothing else. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a tough one for me. So all you atheists, I would love y'all's comments. How about psychic phenomena? We know it's true. I mean, if you just think about it, uh, Dean and I watched... Third Eye Spies. It's uh, about what the CIA was doing the, uh, the remote viewing. If y'all don't know remote viewing, we did a remote viewing practice out here one Sunday. I think, Bonnie, wasn't it uh, like we had 15 of them do it and like six of them got it right? At least five? Something, but it was a good number. We just put a random object in a bag. They didn't know what it was. We did the little practice and they drew exactly what was in the bag. I mean, to have about 30, 35% get it exactly right is crazy. It's crazy to think that there's not some kind of mental power and people are more in tune to it in the, the energies of the world. I think it's silly. I think dark forces make us go, oh, you're just a wacko. You're crazy. You're just a wacko. Or you're a wacko for look, listening to Joe Dispenza. Like, Joe just has all, if y'all don't know who Joe Dispenza is, when you go home, watch something on Joe Dispenza. Like, just start watching Joe Dispenza. He just cures the people. Like, they, they learn how to cure themselves. It's amazing. And most people right off the bat go, wacko, you're crazy. But why? Because you got to have a placebo trial in every single drug that you manufacture. And those placebos, when they think they're getting a shot of something miracle drug, 
It's just saline solution. Or they're taking a pill. It's a, a sugar pill. And what's happening? Spontaneous cancer remission. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. You got to have placebos. And if your drug can't beat the placebo, then you got to start from, got to go back to the drawing board. That's a powerful mind for people to say you're crazy. Nah, maybe you're crazy for not thinking about it. And we got this last one, guys. What do we do? Why don't we let fear stop us from doing stuff? Like, I don't think everybody should jump out of a plane. I love jumping out of planes. I've done it a few times. I've done it with Dante. Anybody else have jumped out of a plane with her? No. Oh, these guys. You know, most people don't think of it. They just think that's crazy. But there's 60, uh, there's, this is great to me. There's an average of uh, 3 million 200 jumps per year around the world. This is 0.04% of people get, get hurt. Meaning, you know, they broke their leg or broke an ankle or something. And it's typically from the, the landing process. But it's 0.001% of people that have fatal injuries. That's, that's about zero. Like it doesn't get almost to zero than that. So we let fear stop us because we think we're going to get hurt. They're not going to like us. Oh, I was telling somebody today, sitting over there, I get calls from probably about 20 people a week. I'm coming out, Kev. I can't wait to come out. I love these conversations. I love it. I love it when we go, uh, I see y'all playing games outside or y'all are meditating or what you're doing with the cows and all that, get free food, all that stuff. Is, are they going to like me? Is it okay if I come out? Are they, are somebody go, are they, it's okay, right? I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Like fear just gets in the way of everything. That's a dark force. I just think we need to recognize these demons and I'm glad y'all been with me this long. It was dark. I mean, you think about this. I've thought about this a lot of times in my life when I get really down or like something didn't work out because my grandpa told me this. He said, it is always the darkest right before the sun comes up. And that has really stuck with me and I hope it sticks with y'all. It's always the darkest right before the sun comes up. It's a new day. You can live in that day. You can figure out how to navigate your life this morning. You take one breath. You take one step. You practice. You practice recognizing yourself. You practice it. Like I got a good buddy of mine who's close to another friend of mine that's here. He was telling me how he was so upset at his wife he had to throw his remote control and bust it all on the floor. I'm like, dude, the second you picked up your remote control to start to throw it on the floor, did you think, why am I picking up this remote to throw it on the floor? Stop being a jackass. You know what I mean? You have to start recognizing what you're doing. Is that accomplishing anything? Am I making my spouse love me more? I mean, as soon as that remote smashes on the ground, you just know she's going to go, man, I love you more now. Man, you just got me with that doll. Oh, that's, uh, that's what it is. I mean, come on. We got to be aware of what we're doing. We just have to be aware. If y'all enjoyed this, everybody that's watching, all of you thousands of people, I love you. Thank y'all for coming. And you know where to find us. And if you're local, come out and see us. We need friends. We need to close the divides in this world. It's really stupid. And let's just not be stupid. See you next time.